All right. Um, what we've got to do to begin this problem is to pick a datum feature. And let's start on the inner shaft over here. We've got three features that I can see right off the bat. There's the end of the part, there's the small hole, and there's the big diameter here. On this part, from those features, which one do you think would fit the criteria for selection of datum features the best? The big diameter? Uh, why? Specifically, what is it? Why is it better than the small diameter or the end of the part? It's a mating feature. Okay, and well, the small hole is a mating feature too. Larger surface area. Okay, it does have a larger surface area. That's a lot to go for that. It's an outside diameter instead of an inside diameter. It's got a smaller size tolerance too. Does that lend anything else to it? What is size control besides size? Form, rule number one, right? Size controls the form, and in the, the form of this is cylindricity. So this is very cylindrical, 0 0.05 millimeters, about two thousandths of an inch that this thing can taper. Can't taper very much, and it's very repeatable. If you grab it, release it, grab it again, you'll probably get about the same axis each time. So this fits all of the criteria. It is functional. It is representative of a mating feature. It uh, is accessible, and it is repeatable. And it's very rare that you'll get all four of those criteria fulfilled. And when you do, you ought to lunge for it as a datum feature. And here I am lunging for this as a datum feature. I'm going to call this, right on this arrowhead here, I'm going to call this datum feature A. Please do the same. Please call that datum feature A. Now we know that datum feature A generates a central axis. And it's that axis from which we'll measure. So this. Although I wouldn't really identify this on the drawing, I would just identify the datum feature. From that, I know that I get a central axis called datum axis A. And just for our purposes of conversation, I'm going to go ahead and write in that this is datum axis A. Now, the reason we have a datum axis is to measure things from or orient things to. Something that gets measured from A. What is the obvious choice of something to get measured from A? The hole itself. All right, so the little hole. And if I was to give this some sort of geometric control, I would simply relate it to A. And when I did that, the portion of the hole that I would be relating to A would be the axis of the hole. So really, this is line geometry. The axis of this hole in relationship to the axis of A. Now in the view that you have of these things, they are shown like this. What is this relationship? Perpendicular. Perpendicularity. But if I showed it to you in the side view, and I said that this was the axis of A, and this was the axis of the hole, and I said these are still perpendicular, but they don't run into each other, would that be acceptable? No. You actually need a little bit more than just perpendicularity. You need them to intersect. So in this view, you need the angle. But in this view, you need the distance to be correct. So we need angle and distance. And what geometric characteristic fulfills that? Position. So inside this feature control frame, let's all write a positional control. And certainly, what you do to one, you do to the other. So over here on the other one, it would get its own positional control. All right, so somewhere inside of this feature control frame, there would be an A. And the relationships that would be held, the degrees of freedom that would be stopped by A, between that hole and A. This is the hole's axis. This is the axis of A. Their relationship would certainly be perpendicular and intersection. Would that relationship of perpendicularity and intersection be held even if the axis of the hole ended up over here? Yeah, it would. Do you care if the axis of the hole ends up over here? You wouldn't even know it. Um, if there was a flat on the side of the part, might you care then? If there was a keyway that ran through the side of the part, might you care then? Yeah. yeah, but on this part, we don't seem to care. And so because there is no flat or keyway or anything else that we might rotate into, this is strictly a degree of spatial freedom that we will allow to exist. Now, 
there is another degree of spatial freedom we have to consider, and it's translation down the axis of A. Is it okay if this axis gets too far away from the end of the part, was like down here? Okay, functionally, why is that not okay? Pardon? It won't, won't mate. And what would stop it? What would stop this hole from aligning with these two holes if this hole was way down here? The end of the part. So the end of the part would bottom out in the bottom of this hole before the holes got a chance to align and allow me to put the screw in. So we have to stop translating.